Hi, my name is Jordan. I work for the Piton Foundation and I'm also a member of the Floodlight team. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a quick and easy data visualization using Google Fusion Tables and Google Spreadsheets. So to start, what we're looking at here is a spreadsheet that I put together. This is showing um, for seven geographic areas within Denver and Aurora how many students, how many public school students qualify for the free and reduced lunch program for the years 2006 through 2011. And I just wanted to start by looking at this spreadsheet because uh, with data visualizations 95 percent of your time is actually collecting the data analyzing it and refining it and then five percent is really visualizing it so if you've really done your homework and you've put together a good spreadsheet you'll be able to visualize it really easily um, I, I like to use Google Spreadsheets, but you could also use Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice, and those integrate pretty well with Fusion Tables. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new Fusion Table. Um, and I can actually just import the data directly from a Google Spreadsheet. So I'm going to click that I want to do a Google Spreadsheet, and it will pre-populate it with my um, the spreadsheets that I have in my account. So I'm going to click the one I want and say Select. And you could also do this by uploading a CSV file. You could even upload a shape file like a KML if you do have geo data. Um, but we're just importing it directly from Google Spreadsheets, and it should load here in a second or two. All right, there we go. And you can see that this spreadsheet actually had two tabs. And I'm going to choose the first tab, which is the um, just the number of students. The second one happens to be the percent of students qualifying for free and reduced lunch. Um, I'm going to click Next. Um, next it'll ask me do you have headers and I do and my headers happen to be in row one but if you had none you could select none as well um, and I'm going to click next again and on this um, this step now I can actually give this a title so I'm going to say free and reduce lunch by um, geographic area 2006 to 2011 and you can also add attribution so this is from Denver Public Schools and Aurora Public Schools and you could also add a link if you wanted and then you can also um, add descriptions or notes so I'm going to say data compiled by the Piton Foundation um, and then I'm going to do finish and it's generating my fusion table right now all right so here it is, and you may be thinking this looks kind of like a spreadsheet. Why did I need to import it into Fusion Tables? Well, Fusion Tables actually has some powerful capabilities that you can't necessarily do easily from a spreadsheet. You can do things like joins, you can do you can add filters. Right now we don't have a filter applied. Um, and you can do visualizations, you can make charts, and even maps if you have geographic data. So I'm going to add a new chart, and Fusion Tables will pick the chart that it thinks it wants me to make. So right now it has an XY scatter plot, which is if we kind of mouse around here, we see this actually makes no sense with what we want to show. We actually want to choose a column chart and it automatically redraws for us when we change the chart type. Here's what a, a bar chart would look like, but we want to go with column and I just want to take a, a few seconds here to make a plug for bar and column charts. They're very simple and you learn how to make them in elementary school, but they're kind of the workhorse of data visualization. So don't un underestimate the power of the bar or column chart. So right now it's just showing me the free and reduced lunch students by geographic area for 2006, but I actually want to see the other years of data because I want to see some of the trends. So I can just simply click my years um, and because I set up the spreadsheet properly, um, it draws correctly. I'm going to add in 2010 and I'm going to add in 2011. And you can see we have some cool interactivity where if I mouse over it'll actually tell me the number of students in that geographic area from that year. You can edit your chart by clicking on this change appearance button and here you can add a title, you can change the colors of the bars, you can um, edit the axes, you can do all kinds of things. And because this is supposed to be a quick and easy video, um, I actually did this already. Oops, here it is. Um, so this is the kind of um, customization that you can do. And, and I like to joke that this is the part of the show the cooking show where I put the cake in the oven and then I pull it out and it's already pre-baked. So that's what I did here, but I just wanted to do this so I can show you how easy we can now embed it into our floodlight story. So one thing you'll notice is that I've already set this up so that my visibility is public. Um, if this was a private fusion table, I couldn't embed it. So you have to first make sure that it's public on the web. So I've done that. Um, and then to actually share it, I'm going to go up to this tab up here and I'm going to say publish. 
and Google will give me both a link and an embed code. And for embedding this on my floodlight story, I actually want to go with the embed code. Um, notice also that we can change the dimensions, the height and width. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 900 pixels wide and um, 600 pixels, pixels tall. Um, so then I'm going to click in that HTML embed code box and I'm going to do a control C to copy it. And then I'm going to go over to Floodlight, and I don't have a story open, but I can just do this quickly by saying create my story. And luckily, I'm already logged in. Um, and I'm actually going to create a data story because this is a data visualization. Um, first, we need to give it a title. So my test data story. Um, and then we're actually going to go to the data visualization section of the template. And I'm going to cho choose a chart, um, and then I'm going to plop the embed code there and I'm going to click save changes and here's the moment of truth while it's loading um, and there it is and notice that the interactivity is now preserved within my floodlight story. Um, a quick note about why you might actually want to include a data visual visualization within a story instead of just publishing it directly from Fusion Tables which you can also do. Um, within my story I can actually add context so I can start to describe you know I'm, we're noticing some trends that the number of free and reduced lunch students is increasing every year in a lot of these geographic areas. Whereas other ones like the near Northeast or North and Northeast Park Hill, it's staying more steady. We can also point out anomalies. You may have noticed there's this um, point 2007 in East Colfax and original Aurora where there's clearly an anomaly in the data. And we can actually explain that for that year we didn't have data from APS, so there's a hole, there's something missing. So those are some things you might do to actually um, explain your data in your story. Um, you can find all of these step-by-step -step, step instructions for how to do this demo on the Floodlight website, so go to floodlightproject.org, and thanks for listening. Uh, happy storytelling!